to Karen Puzzles. If you're new here, yes, this is a YouTube channel all about jigsaw puzzles. But if you didn't know, um, before I started this channel, I've actually spent years and years making DIY videos over on my other YouTube channel. So a while back on my DIY channel, I put up a video about how to make your own gradient puzzle by spray painting an existing puzzle. It came out so good. I'm still obsessed with it. I still have it. But the thing about this project is that you essentially sacrifice a puzzle to the project since you'll never get back the original puzzle. So I was thinking and I had the idea, what if instead of painting the front of the puzzle, you flipped it over and you painted the gradient on the back of the puzzle. That way you would have a custom puzzle on one side and then still have the original puzzle on the other side. Spoiler alert, that's what we're doing today. Let's get into it. So the puzzle that I'm going to be using in this video is Poolside by Cloudberries. And I really, really hope this works because I love this puzzle so much. I really don't want to ruin it. I would definitely recommend choosing a puzzle that's fairly good quality, probably not something from the dollar store, but any of the brands really that I've uh, reviewed, like Cloudberries or Eboo, probably Seiko would work, Ravensburger would definitely work. Anything with like fairly thick, good quality pieces should be fine for this. And if you wanna know more about Cloudberries specifically, I actually did a video reviewing them, like going into detail about everything to do with their puzzles. So I'll link that review right down below. Also, uh, before I get into it, I wanted to tell you guys that over on Instagram, I'm doing a giveaway of some Cloudberries puzzles. And are you ready? This is something that you guys have been asking for every single time I do a giveaway. It is international. <coughs> Excuse me while I cough through my big announcement. Yes, it is international this time. Cloudberries are so generous. They're willing to send the puzzles anywhere all over the world. So uh, head to the description for all of the information about that. Okay, so let's get started. Obviously, we're going to need to flip this puzzle over. And the best way to do that is to have the puzzle on a piece of foam core or plywood or just any really sturdy, stiff material. Put a second piece of foam core on top and then holding all three layers really tightly, quickly flip the whole thing over. And now we have access to the back side of the puzzle. Make sure that all of the pieces are lying flat and then bring it outside to spray paint. I'd recommend doing a base coat of white paint first and something that I wasn't expecting is that when you're painting cardboard instead of the printed side of the puzzle, the paint will kind of seep into the cardboard. So your first coat might be kind of splotchy, but that's totally fine. Just let it dry and then do a second coat and that one should be a lot more smooth. So now it's time to choose your designs and paint a gradient or any other design that you wanna make. If you're doing a design like mine, I'd recommend starting from the middle and working your way out. And make sure that you hold the paint about a foot away from the surface so that you get a nice big gradient. So I let that dry overnight and then I decided to mask off some stripes just to give it a little more detail so that I wouldn't end up with giant sections that were all one color. I wanted to make it a little easier on myself. Once I finished painting all of the stripes, I let it dry to the touch, which was maybe five or 10 minutes, and then immediately removed all of the tape. And then to finish off the whole thing, I just gave it a coat of a clear sealant and then again, let it dry overnight. So I have to say, I think it looks beautiful, 
But the thing that I was the most worried about, did the paint bleed through to the front of the puzzle? Well, let's flip it over, take a look. I'm so happy to say that it did not. The front of the puzzle still looks perfect. You cannot tell that the back is painted. I'm so happy with how that came out. Okay, but wait, let's hang on. The other thing that I was worried about was whether all of the pieces would essentially get glued together from all of the paint that we put on. But I was just a little more careful than usual. It took maybe 10 or 15 minutes to slowly go through and break apart all of the pieces. And uh, I was able to do it. And now we have a bunch of puzzle pieces. <laughs> I would definitely recommend doing light coats of your spray paint rather than really heavy coats, because if you just have paint sitting on top of the pieces, that's where they kind of stick together a little bit more. But if you're just doing light coats of paint, they will still break apart pretty easily. So I love how much more colorful this puzzle gets by having colors on both sides of the pieces. Obviously you can tell which side of the piece goes with which puzzle, so you're not really making it any harder by making it a double-sided puzzle. But this is a great way to double the use of each one of your puzzles. So I just wanted to prove to you guys that I still was able to put this together as a puzzle. So I mixed up all the pieces, sorted them out, just like any other puzzle, and put it all back together. To be honest, um, I probably should have painted a few more details or like a few more stripes because I did end up with some large sections that were all the same color, which as you guys know, is kind of a pet peeve of mine in puzzles. So I did end up with a lot of spots where I put the piece in the wrong spot and had to go back and fix it later because I, there just weren't enough clues in the design of the puzzle for like to know exactly where each piece was going to go but that was totally on me uh, i should have done a more detailed design so it's really just your own preferences and that's the beauty of painting a custom puzzle like this is you can make it exactly how detailed or not detailed or easy or hard that you want it to be. Overall, it was really fun. Uh, the puzzle pieces don't feel quite as nice as a normal puzzle because the texture is a little bit rough from being on the cardboard side of the puzzle. It doesn't feel as nice as the printed side of the puzzle, but that wasn't a huge deal. It was just like a little something that I noticed. And overall, it was still really fun. In the interest of full disclosure, I do want to show you guys that there were a few areas where the pieces did kind of rip as I was taking them apart, so it no longer looks pristine like a, you know, a professionally made puzzle would be. But if you're a little more careful than I was and really take your time taking the pieces apart for the first time after painting them, you can probably avoid that. It also wasn't a huge deal. As you can see, um, I flipped the puzzle back over to make sure Sure all of the pieces were in the right spot and they were I managed to solve it and this is not what I was intending but a little bonus is that it gives you a little bit of a clue about whether the puzzle piece is in the right spot as you're working
backing because you can flip it over and see if the back also matches and then uh, if it doesn't you obviously know what's wrong. All right so I hope you guys liked that little puzzle DIY project. I tried to break down all of the steps for you if you want to try it out for yourself and I would love to see any custom uh, puzzles that you guys paint on the back of your puzzles. So make sure you tag them in me uh, at Karen Puzzles on Instagram so that I can see. Also, some of you might be wondering, what if I don't have spray paint? Can I use acrylic paint or other types of paint? I actually did also do a similar video over on HGTV Handmade, which is the other channel that I make DIY videos for. Um, I did a jigsaw puzzle wedding guest book last year, which turned out so cute. For that one, I did use spray paint as the base, but then I switched to acrylic paint for all of the details. So I would say as long as you have like one color of spray paint just to put down the base layer, uh, you can then switch to any other paints that you have on hand. So I'm gonna link that video right down below, as well as my original DIY gradient puzzle video if you wanna check that one out. Don't forget that I am doing an international giveaway of some Cloudberries puzzles. Um, I just wanna give a huge shout out to them for being so generous and agreeing to ship the puzzles anywhere in the world and also for providing uh, Poolside, which is the puzzle that I used in this video. All right, if you've managed to make it to the end of the video, your code word for the comments is going to be stripes, okay? And then I'll know that you watched the entire thing. Also, feel free to let me know if you have ever painted a custom puzzle or what design you would make on yours. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And that's going to be it from me for today. I'll see you all next time.